This is the first budget in post-COVID scenario and there are a lot of new challenges which this budget is expected to address. Some of the positive points are focus on capital investment to push growth, reintroduction of developmental financial institutions, allocation for COVID vaccination, industry and sector specific interventions offers hope if matched with allocation, bold decision to expand fiscal deficit to provide growth impetus, a medium and long-term vision for self-reliant India. However, Orissa would be hit by drastic reduction of share and central taxes by about rupees 10,848 crores for the current year and as per the recommendations of the 15th Finance Commission, the horizontal share will decrease from 4.629% to 4.528% for coming five years. This will seriously impact the state. Further capital investments very much require in Odisha, both in railway and highway sectors, as it has been planned for other states. There is a need to increase allocation in social assistance programs and quantum of transfers for local bodies. Centralization of revenue by introduction of SES in petrol and diesel will weaken the center state fiscal balance. Banks have to be made accountable to extend credit to women, farmers and MSMEs. I am happy to note that union budget has turned green with digital budget like what Orissa has been following from last year. I am also delighted to see Mission Shakti appear in the union budget focusing on women empowerment. After Orissa's Mamta scheme was adopted by the union government from 2011-2012, the application of our state's flagship women empowerment initiative Mission Shakti clearly shows that Odisha has set benchmarks for the nation. I am hopeful that after Mamta and Mission Shakti, the next logical step towards women empowerment would be reservation for women in the Lok Sabha and the state assemblies. We will continue to fight for this. Thank you.